home. It's a Sunday and it's a day to relax, a day to sleep in, and it's a day to stop and smell the roses and listen to the song, the bird song. Because if we are not wise, there will be no more birds, no more fish, no more mankind, says Zephaniah 1 1. So it's time to look back at our beginnings carefully because there was a huge twist in the beginning. Because the truth is found in the book of Giants, the book of Enoch, the books that have not been added to the Word of God. Because early uh, Dark Age people did not like the idea of publicly admitting that the fallen ones, the, the angelic angels that became demons, that they got so horny that they frigged around with all the little lizards to create the big guys. And then came the 2,000 pound sloths. This world, according to what is written, was created with very great age, ancient on day one. And that makes sense because Adam and Eve had no belly buttons. Think about it. So in this hour of love's greatest power, his love's greatest power comes forth in the form of knowledge. For God's people have always been destroyed by lack of knowledge. So if you, entomb, if you look up Entombed Animals, Daniel Owsley, Entombed Animals, you'll listen to factually how hundreds and hundreds of reptiles and bats and a pterodactyl or two came out of rock and they were all alive. Toads, a lot of uh, frogs. And after supposedly 50 million years, they just got caught in the mud. And really what happened, the mud fossilized around them. And uh, they had nothing to breathe, nothing to eat for supposedly millions of years. No, it was thousands of years, but uh, it's amazing that uh, animals can actually go into a state of suspended animation, but that is self-evident. And truth is truth wheresoever it is found. So in this hour of love's greatest power, it's important to know that a deep relationship with our Lord is extremely good. Even deeper is better still. To know God, though, to really know him, someone must be um, as a little child with their love alive as a verb because he is living with them. Each and every one of us is what the word of God says. Maybe not what the world has been taught, but that is what the word says. For God says, I am your God. You are my people. I have forgiven you. I will never remember it. I'll write my law and my love on your hearts. Beyond that, no one will ever even need to be taught of me, says the Lord God. For all shall know me from the least to the greatest of all mankind. It was correctly addressed, Jeremiah 31, 33 to 35 to all mankind, Jeremiah 32, 27, and it was addressed to Israel, uh, Jeremiah 31, 1. That is why they have inherited now all mankind, Isaiah 54, 3. And so know that a deep relationship is great, but to really know him deeply, someone must become heated, heated up uh, enough to stand up and be counted and this is uh, imperative uh, and so in this hour uh, people's commitment must keep them to keep searching for he who is our beloved the blessed and the adored to keep searching for him with with all of their being through with all of their heart through some careful study of his word before i wrote the 200 books that i did on uh, prophecy uh, i studied to show myself approved i gave myself through the holy spirit school of neology a much better education than anyone graduating from any theology uh, class i can talk prophecy all day long and so it's time with all of our being, we need to look at 
all truths as a whole, regardless of where the truths are. We need to find the truths in other religions. And there's never been a bigger lie than evolution, which which has really been like a cancer to, to the souls of billions of people. Uh, for that misinformation slowly eats away at people's hearts and minds with misinformation giving no credit to the creator for anything. Now, I wrote a book called God Did Not Create Dinosaurs. He created the little lizards, and he told all of a, a, a vegetarian creation in the beginning that the trees of the fields would be as their uh, meat. And uh, But then the satanic uh, interference with the fallen ones came, and then came the giants. And there was giant men, Genesis uh, 6-6, six, six, and uh, the Nephilim, and even after the flood, which was the only cause for the, the, the great flood, was to wipe away the gigantism uh, so that we would not be toast, because the giants were eating us, even the giant people, according to Gilgamesh, the oldest book uh, written in cuneiform by, by a giant. And it was written in stone, if you ever want to read an interesting book. Nor could anyone ever have a true picture of the Lord God uh, if, if, if they don't understand his creation. And uh, he's never been a respecter of his creation. People have not understood what that means either. So know that one must wonder what causes so many brilliant minds out there to go to the incredible lengths that they do to deny a supreme creator. It takes a far greater faith to believe that we somehow evolved from a piece of slime millions of years ago than to believe in a creator. And the truest truth is, Charles Darwin, he said it, it's absolutely ridiculous uh, to even consider that I, with such in intricacies with its uh, focus, that uh, an I just evolved. And he, he recanted his uh, uh, evolution theory. And he said, but uh, when I let it out of the bag, it became like a wildfire, in his words, and he couldn't stop it. And it just spread and it spread. And all, all the evolution charts are a lie. We know now that DNA uh, proves that a frog can only have a frog. A toad can only have a toad unless they're uh, mated with one another. Then you get a foad or I don't know what you call it. But one thing for sure, you can all the evolution charts show a fish. Uh, first, a, a, a slime cell becomes a fish, and then a fish becomes a, a, a frog, and a frog becomes like a, a wolverine. Wolverine becomes like a woolly mammoth and all that crap. And it's always been a big lie, evolution lie. Regression. Regression goes backwards. Progression goes forwards. Depression is depressing, and evolution fits well under absolutely all of those uh, categories. I'm going to get me another. Hello. I'm just getting so comfortable because it's a sad, it's a Sunday, and uh, so we got to take it easy. But one thing for sure, uh, that grossly false theory of Darwin, it dares and it has been daring to eliminate God from Earth's history as well as blasph blasphemy always does. Thus that, that, that theory does a great job in taking away people's eternal hope of a creator who made them with tender love and care. Fearfully and wonderfully have we been made in the image of uh, he who is love, because we are beings of love, we need to let the love out. And so it's time that uh, we, we can look ahead uh, living with love the rest of our lives. And no matter how the accursed theory of evolution is, is cut up, every piece of doctrine of deceit... By the way, I'm reading uh, from my book... Um, the Forbidden Knowledge of Good and Evil, one of my 200 books. Every piece of that doctrine of deceit has always been evil, eviler, and evilest among all other teachings. 
as well as being pretty damn dumb, dumber, and dumbest to every unlearned person who mindlessly will fall hook, line, and sinker into such lies because someone else does. People follow suit and they stand in lines just because someone else went first when they got no spiritual balls to make up their mind about shit. Uh, but what everything boils down to is the fact that humanity hasn't changed too much at all over the last 5,000 years. For there was a time of great ignorance when everyone even believed that our earth uh, was flat just because our world scientific mind said that was so at the time. In the same light, we, we learn and we must grow and we, in order to stop going around the old same maple tree. And in the same light, if, if someone wants to benefit from the forbidden knowledge of good and evil, uh, they have to prepare themselves to be independent thinkers. Uh, thus, uh, wise type of souls have to be prepared to go against everything that we've been taught. If the climbing evidence clearly proves that they were long ago taught some hooey uh, that uh, amounts to the kind of baloney that all brainless people are always full of shit. And everyone out there in the world is full of shit about Elijah, uh, who I am. Uh, the original is coming back. He's one of the two witnesses. There was a two candlesticks in that vision. I come from the one candlestick vision of Zachariah. And he lit that candlestick in the natural uh, seven minutes. I wrote by a lamp that was never plugged in because I'm the writer of the flying scroll of Zechariah 5, the everlasting gospel of Revelation 14, a literal piece of writing. I am a literal writer, uh, line by line, precept by precept, with the strong and mighty one come by, line by line, that I wrote, um, and uh, that uh, I would be as a, a, a terrifying storm pulling down, even as a hailstorm, all distortionalities, so that pe the people could finally see as the shine as the sun, and that is what we need. So know that good nature is worth more than knowledge. It's worth more than money or, or honor to people who possess it. And to have a good nature, we need to be loving people. And so it came to pass from out of our great beyond that the voice of reason suddenly chimed in, not wanting to be ignored. And as reason spoke up, he held God's most truthful authority, since that giant of logic was always re uh, reasonable in every way. And then he spoke, and reason said this, facts are facts, truth is truth. And just believing something to, to be true doesn't mean it really is. And common sense is truly good, uh, good sense for people who are informed. Unfortunately, this is a world where people don't want to be informed, especially if it goes against something that they have believed. And uh, such is chrysalum. That's why I have done everything in vain. I got to get my glasses there. Um, but to be informed in e uh, is equal to, uh, to be uninformed, rather, is to, to be equal to stupidity. And that causes mental blocks where people's useless opinions are only as valuable as some used charmin, if you know what I mean. And nor is open-mindedness something that could ever possibly happen. If someone is used to being closed-minded to some unusual things without even bothering to take a very hard look at all the evidence that's before them with a very big magnifying glass. You want to talk dinosaurs? I used to be a fossil hunter, and I would go looking for hot fossils, and I found a lot. You could look up the uh, Elvis uh, Paluxy uh, tracks, and you'll see a, a dinosaur three-pronged uh, footprint and a human footprint right on it. And uh, you could listen to Marco Polo's description, eyewitness accounts of T-Rex. Uh, just punch in Marco Polo, Daniel Owsley. You'll hear hear that. Uh, you could. Uh, 
a Google uh, T-Rex blood cell, that guy, and you'll, you're going to do images and you will see the cell still in the... Uh, the cell in the vein of that guy. That's not old people. And so the truth is truth wherever it is uh, to be found. Nor is open-mindedness something that could ever happen if someone is is used to being closed-minded to, to some unusual things without even bothering to take a hard look. Uh, and neither is the quality of being objective something that could happen in anyone's life if they're uh, willingly subjected to things that are illogical. Thus, true logic is always well-informed, well-studied, and open to the kinds of evidence that nobody with half of a brain could ever possibly dismiss unless they were having some kind of uh, brain uh, flatuation, some nice big brain farts. Uh, and, and insofar as evolution goes, all someone has to do is spend an hour or two on the internet exploring the undeniable proof of creation through cosmo uh, cosmology, thermodynamics, paleontology, biology, mathematical probability, geology, and many other scientific studies that are now within the reach of billions of us. And if someone is sensible after going through a brief study, they would have to admit that all of the current scientific data clearly shows that only creation is greatly supported uh, and not the evolution model in any way, shape, or form whatsoever. That There has never been an uh, intermediate fossil, a missing link between any of the evolving creatures. It's always been bunk. Therefore, evolution is an outright lie from the devil who has been removed in accordance with Daniel uh, 12, 1 and Revelation 12 because he was the accuser of the brethren. Read, read the book of Revelation. Uh, and this is a latter-day prophecy. And uh, he had to be removed because, boy, my hair is a mess, because uh, the Lord God is saying, I will forgive you and I will never remember it. So the accuser of the brethren had to be logically removed. And so, therefore, uh, it's born, evolution has been born out of the mouth of that old snake of Eden, that snake of snakes, who w used to whisper that mankind is really from monkeys to try to make a big monkey out of us. And the pity is, the biggest pity is, that if people who came to believe such tripe had only gone to Paluxy, Texas, or looked it up as I'm saying, uh, P-U-L-I-X-E, Paluxy Dalk uh, Fossil, Google image of it, um, it or looked up uh, famous photographs like that, uh, then people would finally have realized that evolution has always been heresy. Furthermore, anyone in the, these last days can easily find evidence uh, of uh, huge holes in evolution's moth-eaten fabric through some extraordinary kind of fossils. Uh, just one example of uh, such an incredible relic that proves ev evolution to be utterly false is that before mentioned fossil, fossilized scandal, uh, sandal print, uh, from Paluxy that clearly, uh, that's clearly stepping on even a small tribolite, which should have been extinct over 68 million years earlier, according to all evolutionist scientists who take no pleasure in talking about such fantastic evidence. And ever so sad as it is, there are presently millions of so-called Christians claiming that they believe in God while denying his power, while believing in evolution, uh, and seeing the word of God as a, just a metaphoric good book about some nice symbolic things. And meanwhile, it has always been mostly a literal book. Uh, Sir Isaac Newton foretold me, uh, Daniel, the latter-day Elijah, he said about the time of the end, uh, the Elijah of this age would come uh, insisting on literal Bible interpretations of prophecy amidst much clamor and opposition is what he said. And so it is time 
uh, that such people of God need to see that they don't know uh, how they'll earn their places of torment if they let their love light go out. Uh, and uh, believing in evolution helps our love for our Creator to diminish. And in the minds of those kind of fools in the story of Jonah uh, and the whale, uh, to people like that, uh, Jonah and the whale is just a tall tale about a big big one that got away and barfed up a, a prophet. Uh, and uh, it, it comes forth such twists, uh, uh, waves of total disbelief. That kind of backwards thinking always gives birth to atheists. And by the way, atheists have been some of the smartest people in the world. They've refused to believe that there's an angry, hostile, wrathful God up there waiting to zap us all uh, when God is clearly love. You cannot be love and you cannot be a wrathful God too. That is the mystery of God revealed, Revelation 10, 7, because the first is last and the last is first and the seven trumpet did sound first and all nations are now the Lord's because the Lord's kingdom age covenant uh, that makes all faith obsolete, Hebrews 8, uh, has finally come. And so it shall be a very sure thing that such people who get twisted, uh, who don't believe in God's power, will be putting themselves in a lot of jeopardy in days to come right out in front of us while they're placing their spirits in great danger of provoking God's eternal wrath upon their unfearing rock like hearts and the above pitiful scene shall only prove that our Bible is very true and very literal uh, after all it's written uh, that people are destroyed eternally for their lack of knowledge uh, so it's therefore a real pitiful thing that people's desire for truest knowledge of spiritual matters hasn't arisen greatly like some great clouds of curiosity which in turn would rain down a deep desire for the truest truth like torrents of some pretty heavy questions and so know that the scientist's pursuit of the past uh, ends in the moment of creation this is an exceedingly strange development unexpected by all but the theologians for they have always accepted the word of the Bible. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And so in this hour, uh, you have to look at evolution really hard. So come on back because the next episode is just going to spin your socks right off. Bye now.